Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Tinnitus and if you're new, welcome to a positive community where you can meet people in the comments and you know, learn something about your tinnitus. I just want to say thank you so much to all the lovely messages and all of the new people that have joined the community. I was on BBC One which was the most exciting and nerve-wracking thing. I didn't actually get to see a preview of it until I saw it live on the day. It was really good and I'm so glad that the awareness is finally being spread. This week is very exciting because it's tinnitus awareness week i spread awareness about tinnitus throughout the whole year but tinnitus awareness week is when a lot of other people start reading about it searching up about it and just finding out about what they're dealing with and realizing things aren't normal so if you're one of the people that have found out about your tinnitus through tinnitus awareness week please do not worry and if you've been to the doctors and they say there's nothing you can do there is a lot you can do with tinnitus. You can't cure it but there are so many ways to manage and that's one of the things I want to talk about today is the stigma around tinnitus. If you've read my book you will know that I speak a lot about stigma in here. There's so much that I can talk about when it comes to stigmas for tinnitus and it's one of the reasons why it's such a misunderstood condition. If you haven't read my book it's basically a guide called the tinnitus cookbook which has lots of recipes that can help you with hobbies for your tinnitus. Um, there's lots of different testimonials in here. There's a tinnitus log so you can track your spikes and see if there's any patterns there. You know, I've got everything in here, but if you didn't know about it, it's actually on Amazon, on all marketplaces, and for Tinnitus Awareness Week, I've actually reduced the price. So yeah, if you want to check that out, please do, because you know, that's, that's the only thing I sell. That's my book, it's my baby. I worked on it for a whole year and yeah, it's, it's really just opened up so many doors for me and it's helped me spread this awareness so much more and help people understand. Speaking of books, I've actually been working on another one and I really wanted to get it done for Tinnitus Awareness Week, but I just can't. I can't get it done. It's a big job, you know, it's a big job to get a really decent book sorted and I've been doing all the illustrations for it and it's a bit different to this one. So the tinnitus cookbook is a guide for your tinnitus it has everything you need to know about it everything you can do um testimonials but the next book that i'm working on i'm not going to give too much away it's going to be a lot more immersive and a lot more fun i don't know i mean this one's fun but it's just a different take on tinnitus and i've not seen anything been done like it before so that's going to be exciting. I really wanted to get it done, but I'm probably going to have to wait another week or two before I can finally get that released to you guys. I've been working on it for about three or four months now. When the book is done, you guys will be the first people to know about it. So yeah, that's something to look forward to. I'm sorry I couldn't get it done for Tinnitus Awareness Week, but there's the announcement. The biggest stigma about tinnitus is that there's nothing you can do about it, when in reality, there is so much you can do. I've had tinnitus since I was a child. When I realised it wasn't normal was when my awareness of it started to grow. And this was a problem because the more aware I became, the louder I perceived it to be. Like back in the day when I was young, I didn't care about it because I thought it was normal. Um, but after lockdown was when it really started to impact my life and I went to a few doctors and the first thing they said was there's no cure, there's nothing you can do for it, which is something a lot of us go through which is very sad. This is why awareness needs to be spread, especially through Tinnitus Awareness Week, to educate whoever might be seeing this video that there are things you can do to manage your tinnitus, whereas I know there's no cure. You've got to find these underlying causes which could be creating the tinnitus and then you can actually stop it. So for a lot of people it can be earwax. In my case it's not earwax. I actually don't have a cause for my tinnitus. I just put it down to it being hereditary. But at first I thought okay maybe my tinnitus could be earwax. So I started buying things online which you should not use and it made my tinnitus worse because I was I don't know I was messing with my ears when I shouldn't have been but I thought okay I'll, I'll hope that this is like the easy way out and it, it wasn't it's okay to know that there's nothing causing your tinnitus and it was often a big frustration for me because I was like I just want to know exactly what it is so I can get rid of it completely but half the time there is no specific cause and it just happens you know that's why there's no cure for tinnitus because People don't really know why it's there. One of the biggest things that makes tinnitus so difficult is the lack of control. Those who have tinnitus and it, you know, it gets louder because we become more aware, that's because we're like fighting it. We're not flighting, we're fighting. And that's two responses that we can have. So I've spoke to my audiologist about this and a few other people have said the same thing. So when we hear this noise, our brains are thinking of it as like, oh, 
we should fight this we should like stay alert and keep on it and that's what makes it us more aware of it and we perceive it to be louder whereas a lot of people like my dad for example he has tinnitus but he didn't even know until I started talking about my problems with it uh, so his response is just flight he doesn't care so for the people who are like me fight it annoys us there are things we can do to make us feel more in control of this and I think that's something that a lot of us should focus on so the biggest thing for me when I feel like I'm out of control of my tinnitus is just putting on some white noise you know having a button you can press that is control whereas with tinnitus there is no button you can press to turn it off but if you're in control of some lovely stream sounds for example it can really just take that edge away because you know that you're in control of listening to this nice sound you want to listen to it another thing I love to do is journaling just writing down my thoughts putting things on paper because we often like keep things in our in our minds and it can just build up quite a lot especially before bed before bed my tinnitus gets a lot louder simply because I'm a little bit more stressed if I write things down I get things on paper it gets out my mind and I don't need to keep like thinking about these things because I know that if I forget about it it's on a piece of paper next to my bed journaling with your spikes and your fluctuations sometimes you can see patterns so for me when I started journaling I realized that caffeine was actually setting off my tinnitus which is a common thing for quite a few people there's not a lot of research that like suggests this can actually impact your tinnitus but for a lot of people like it does seem to be a common thing so you know just track down when your tinnitus is spiking because it could be due to stress levels and it just makes you feel more in control knowing when your tinnitus is going to be set off or you can kind of prepare for these things learning cbt exercises was a massive thing for me getting to habituation if you don't know what habituation is it's basically when you no longer have a negative response to your tinnitus and this is the end goal that a lot of people strive for in the tinnitus community so when people mentioned habituation to me like two years ago i'd be like what are you on about what the hell is habituation like is it a pill is it a cure is it a fake cure no it is actually a point where your brain no longer perceives tinnitus as a threat and you can actually live your life happily and comfortably despite it and that's exactly where I'm at now so two years ago I was like sleeping away my days I was so sad with it I was isolated I didn't want to go out didn't want to talk to anyone because I couldn't hear anyone um you know I wasn't wearing hearing protection so I was just making everything so much worse I didn't know what to do right I had no control over it my thoughts were just going crazy I was blaming everything on my tinnitus I felt so negative and once I started doing little things like engaging in little hobbies, making meal preps for me to wake up and get myself out of bed rather than waking up and thinking, oh, is my tinnitus still there? Little things like that got me to the point where I could start looking into CBT. At first, I was like, what the hell is CBT? CBT is cognitive behavioural therapy and these are exercises that you can learn to help your brain get on track to not have that negative response. A CBT mindfulness exercise that I like to do is think of my senses okay so when I'm in a environment where it's particularly loud and stressful and making my tinnitus a lot worse I sit there I observe my thoughts I take my time to just acknowledge what's going on and realize that the thoughts I'm having are normal and then I start thinking about my senses so I start thinking about like five things I can see four things I can uh, smell or three things I can touch two things I could possibly taste I don't know that's what I do it takes my mind off it and all of a sudden I'm at the point where I'm not thinking about my tinnitus. There's so many different exercises like that that you can do. You've just got to find the right ones for you because not everyone's going to enjoy the ones I like and everyone is different with tinnitus. Tinnitus is subjective and every individual is different. Got your different preferences. But I would say if you haven't looked into CBT, definitely do so. It's a very good tool. Another stigma when it comes to tinnitus is the age situation. When I got tinnitus, a lot of people were saying to me, oh, wow, why have you got that? You're only 21 years old. Well, I've had it since I was a child, so isn't that a little bit alarming? Tinnitus is more common for people over the age of 60 because of age-related hearing loss. It comes as a symptom of that. So for me, when I was 18 at the time and I was searching about tinnitus, all of these things that weren't aimed towards myself really got me scared. And that's why I'm here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, sharing my experience to let you know that you're not alone. There are so many people out there with tinnitus that are under the age of 60. And before I started posting about it, I thought I was the only person ever with tinnitus my age. It's, it's crazy. And I'm so grateful that I found all of you guys out there because we can come together and realise we're not alone and there are things we can do to manage and just cheer each other along. Be positive. That's, that's all we can do. 
and it's the best thing we can do. I never thought I could live happily and here I am. I'm happy, comfortable and you can get there as well if you're in that situation where you're feeling like this is the worst thing ever. Trust me, everyone has felt that way with tinnitus. Everyone has felt like theirs is the worst ever. You simply are not alone and every thought that you've had with your tinnitus, the most extreme thoughts where you feel like no one's tinnitus is as loud as mine. Well, trust me, I've had that thought many times and I'm at the point now where I realise everyone's probably thought like this. There are many stigmas when it comes to tinnitus. Everything you read online may not be true, just because there's like a majority of people that say, oh, it's not normal to have tinnitus at such a young age. Or if people say, oh, there is nothing you can do. Tinnitus is the end of a happy life. Trust me, there is so much you can do. And that's from experience. I genuinely thought that that was it for me. That, that was my life done. You know, I was never gonna live happily and you can. There's so much you can do and in my videos I've, I've shared so many different tips and in my book I've got loads of tips and you know in future uh, books that I publish there's going to be so much on there and I can't wait to keep advocating for tinnitus and letting you know that there are things you can do. I feel like in a way I'm talking to my past self because at the time when I was in my worst place this is all I needed was someone to say that look it's going to be okay it's not the end of the world and you don't need to keep being upset and crying about it and giving into it because you can be happy and I'm just so happy to be that person to be telling you guys about that um so yeah just keep being positive be positive share information with other people just comment on things you know commenting on my youtube videos really helps me because it boosts it on the algorithm um and it pushes it up to other people who may not be seeing my videos originally so please keep commenting and sharing your experiences because your experiences mean so much to me looking at them and helps me feel like i'm not alone as well as well as other people searching through looking for experiences to relate to so thank you very much for being here I can't wait to keep posting throughout Tinnitus Awareness Week and, you know, for the foreseeable future because I enjoy so much talking about it and just reassuring you because it's the most rewarding thing in the world. If you enjoyed my video, just make sure to hit the subscribe button because that means so much to me and give it a like as well. Thanks for watching.